<laughs> that was really loud. Sorry. I should have been on my paper. I should have been on the class last week. Nice. Like, no, You've already submitted you yourself? I already did it. Yeah. Woo, and so your application? I did it now. Okay. All the forms that I needed to print out. Yeah, yeah and your transaction. I'll copy Part of my bank statement. Yeah, nice. Good deal. Well, I just have the resource center. It's freezing. Um, you can shout I got to hit start video. Okay. So, well, I feel bad doing a whole class about it's okay. safety for it's you. The last, the last one, I, last year's for safety event I did, there was only two agents and oh, really? And All right. Just the team. Well, Jimmy. I am recording it too. So, um, so what I had in mind for this was the first half of it, we're going to talk about realtor safety tips, the, the forms. Let me grab these forms. The forms that I printed out for you um, and resources that you guys can utilize for safety um, when you're out and showing houses and things. Um, and then we'll, after that, we'll get up, we'll move the tables out of the way and Jason will take over and go over self-defense, Krav mm -hmm. Maga skills. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Teach us some fun. Nick, Nick volunteered to be the punching bag. So. Sweet. Yes. <laughs> good. That means I don't have to be. Okay. Oh, yeah, I do. Um, yeah, I do. Uh, I think that's getting a lunch here. No, I don't, but you can borrow mine. Um, so the paperwork that I printed out for you guys, that first one, this is just kind of some tips. Um, and the first and second sheet kind of give you the same type of information, but this is kind of our office safety action plan that we put together a while ago for you guys. Um, so just some tips, five different things to keep in mind that you can take advantage of to keep yourself a little bit safer and protect yourself. The first one is anytime you have a first time meeting with clients, with the exception, you have to remember that this doesn't necessarily include online leads because online leads, this isn't going to happen. You're not going to get them into the office first. Um, but anytime you're meeting somebody for the first time that you don't know, you should try to arrange to meet them uh, in the office rather than out at properties, out of outside or in their own home, whenever possible. Obviously, that's not always possible. Um, the this, this second one, client IDs. At the first time meeting, all first time clients should provide or can provide to you a copy of their driver's license when you meet them. So you would ask them for a copy of their driver's license, their state ID or other official photo ID. You can ask for that ahead of time, ask them to text it to you before you meet them or ask them for it at the property when you get there before you go inside. Um, and then you can text it to the office. The other thing you can do when you meet them at the property, if you're getting a weird vibe, take a picture of their driver's, I mean, the um, license plate on the car. And do it obviously, you know what I mean? Like it's clear that you're taking a picture. Just, hey, hang on one second. I just have to take a picture of your license plate. Um, and can I get a copy of your driver's license? Um, I have to send it into my office. They keep it on file for all, uh, all new clients that uh, their agents meet, just a safety thing, right? Because if they're a bad guy, they're not gonna give it to you, right? Or they're gonna give you some weird vibes about it. Or they're gonna be like, oh, I totally forgot it. I don't have it or, and then you're going to kind of use your gut and feel out what, you know, what you, how you think you want to proceed with that. Um, but, and you can legit text it to me. You can text it to me and say, hey, Tina, this is the guy I've had agents do this. This is the guy I'm meeting right now. Here's the address that we're at. I'm getting a really weird vibe from him. I just wanted you to know who I'm with and where I'm at and a picture of the car, right? And the drive and the license plate. Um, I had an agent yesterday text me where they were at, the property that they were showing, the time they were starting the showing, and when they were finished, when they finished the showing, they followed up. I've had agents set, so I'm their emergency contact in the Home Snap app, which I'm going to show you and go over with you. And if agents forget to turn off their timer, then I get the alert that says, "Warning, warning! John Taylor has expired. His timer, safety timer, has expired, and you're his emergency contact." So I start calling him and I'm like, hey, what's up? Are you okay? What are you doing? Um, so the, I'm going to go over some of those resources that you guys have for free access to to help keep yourself safe. Hi. You can grab, grab those packets right there. Um, there's one of each, actually. There's three, Millicent. Yeah, all of them. I think you maybe grabbed more than just one, but there's three different packets right there for you. Um, and then, so the next one, distress code system. So in our office, 
We have what's called SHI, send help immediately is our distress code, SHI. So the way that you would use this and the admins are trained up on it, myself, Jim, the way you would use this is if you feel like you're in a distress situation and you need help and you can't safely call 911 or call for help, then what you do is you just say, you know what, hang on one second. I need to call the office and get the instructions and disclosures for this property so I can give you more information about the taxes and the lot size and all of that. I thought it was in my pocket, but it's not. And then you're gonna call the office with them there next to you, but you're gonna say, hey there, Maria, it's Tina. Listen, um, I was hoping that, I was hoping to see if you could have Shy send over the disclosures for the property at 2122 Bradish. Um, I'm here with a, a client and I was hoping to get some more information about the property. So if you can just pass that on to Shy and she can send it over to me. Notice what I did was I said Shy and I gave the address of where I was at. So that's how that works. And then the admins are supposed to know, and I'll make sure I refresh with them often, but um, they know that when you say have shy, send over the disclosures for 2122 Bradish, I'm here with a client, that they need to call 911 and send, and hopefully 911 will go to where you're at, your location, okay? That's funny because that's not my children. Is it? Yes, you call if you're in trouble. You yeah. Keywords. You know, certain words, and then you'll pick up one and say, well, no. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. That's great. I need to do that with my daughter. Yeah. But I have, right? Converts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yellow. I don't know. Um, and then the buddy system. Obviously, buddy system, that's self explanatory. That's an easy one. If you're not comfortable, if you're going to an area you're not comfortable going to, you're meeting a client, somebody you've never met before that you don't know, you don't trust, whatever or you're holding an open house in, in some place that you're not necessarily comfortable with, take a buddy, use the buddy system, right? Find another agent, connect with another agent in the office um, and ask them if they'll go with you or they'll co-host the open house with you or go with you for a showing. It can be a friend, it can be a significant other. It doesn't have to be an agent if you're just going on a showing. I've had several agents tell me that they take their significant other, their spouse in the car with them for showings and they just stay in the car. But there's, a, right, it's a lot less likely that something, a bad guy, as Jason's gonna keep saying all day, a bad guy is going to do something bad to you in a property if they know that you have somebody sitting in the car waiting for you to come out, right? So the buddy system is always a good one. And then safety timers. And I'm gonna show you um, two of the easiest safety timers that you can utilize. So Central Lock has what's called showing beacon. And then HomeSnap has a safety timer as well. So utilize some of those. I also printed this resource for you guys that I printed from the National Association of Realtors. So their website is incredible. First of all, I'm going to show you if you go to National Association of Realtors website and just type in safety at the top, they have an entire platform, an entire section of their website devoted to agent safety. You also can file complaint, safety concerns or emergencies. So if there's somebody, I remember there was somebody that was going around and requesting showings of a property and this per, there was something really sketch about this, this person, this bad guy. Um, and it threw a bunch of agents, um, just kind of their gut up in arms, you know what I mean? And you can actually go to the Realtor Safety Network on NAR's website and report an incident. Um, and it tracks different incidents going on, people, names. So if they're using a name and they've called a couple different agents and asked for showings or whatever, um, and there's just something that doesn't feel right about this person, you can put them in here and report an incident. And then it throws up a red flag to other agents in this realtor safety network, I guess. Um, <clears throat> but there's, uh, plan a, safe, a safety strategy. There's resources there that you can go in and plan your safety strategy. Um, tips and best practices. So here's all about planning your safety strategy, safety tips. Again, a lot of the same things that we just talked about, right? Always meet new clients at the office or neutral location when you can. Share your schedule with a colleague, assistant, or family member. Communicate safety concerns on your listing. Um, so meaning if there's poor cell signal, put that in the agent remarks in the MLS. So help protect other agents. So if you know that your listing is in a bad 
area for cell signal and it gets bad service, put it in your agent only private remarks, safety concern, poor cell signal or something like that. So you're helping protect other agents too. Don't overshare about your personal life publicly on your social media pages. So be very careful, right? This is something that is a safety tip. When they interviewed burglars, 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 Burgle, burgles. Burgle, burgles. Burglars. <laughs> burglars. <laughs> when they interviewed them, ones that had gotten caught and were in prison, and they asked them for some of the most common things that they look for in targeting people or properties. One of the biggest things they said is they watch social media and they scour social media pages and they watch for people to post what? Vacation. That they're out of town. Well, and when people go on vacation, yeah. what's the first thing that they post when they leave their house? I was my exactly. Right? Pictures in the airport. They check in at the airport. I'll they check in in Mexico. They after is fun, right? But um, yeah, exactly. You know, it was such a great time last week in Mexico and whatever. <laughs> but um, yeah. <laughs> you, guys, you guys have seen the, the, uh, the um, Home Alone, right? That's yeah, what yeah. they did. They were going to the neighborhoods knowing that everybody's going on vacation. Yeah, and they targeted self, right? Home no, alone, that is a classic. Four. It's a classic. Everybody knows Home Alone. <laughs> Um, if I said Maricol on 34th Street, doesn't mean I'm like 90. True, yeah. true. Come on now. Um, but don't overshare about your personal life. Do not host open houses alone. So be very careful. If you're hosting open houses, be very careful hosting them alone. Try to get somebody to go with you. There's a lot of agents right now, new agents that need to shadow somebody. I know Trevor shadowed, shadowed yours last weekend. Yes, he got me on my hot mess day. <laughs> like, he, said you were, he said stuff. you had you had a bin with drinks and you had a snack like i had a, a real like good bag that had everything so i had to use like my backup real to do the agents for me that's funny well he seemed impressed he was like yeah she was really organized she had all this stuff set out and i was like okay good. that was like trump kit but i have a better yeah. kit okay. i always keep you know extra so yeah, but take somebody with you. Ask, put in the group, who needs to shadow an open house? Who wants to come do an open house with me? Um, if you're not comfortable doing one alone, take a friend, take a significant other. They can't talk real estate, right? But they can be there with you. They can be your helper. I've seen agents take like their teenagers to help with setup and to help greeting people at the door and giving out snacks, but they're not talking real estate. They're just there as a helper. So you guys can do the same thing. Take a help. Lenders out. love that too. So call Nick. Yeah. See, Nick, I got an open house. I want you to come to. <laughs> I'll wear my black belt. <laughs> or the way, like their husband or boyfriend or friend just kind of sit out front too. I don't know. Yeah. When you say that they'll like drive them and sit out. Yeah. Front. Yeah. If they want to stay outside for the whole open house. Yeah. They can do that too. But yeah. You schedule my bubble date. What's that? Schedule my bubble date. Your bubble date. <laughs> Come join me for lunch. Lunch okay. date at, the, lunch? at my house. But I'm <laughs> oh my God, you're funny. Um, check your cell phone battery and signal before heading into an appointment. So always make sure your cell phone is charged, right? Have a charger in your car at all times. Keep it plugged in while you're driving between appointments, but make sure that your cell phone is always charged between appointments and that you have decent signal. And if you don't, take some additional precautions. Make sure you have Louis Vuitton ready <laughs> or that you're packing or whatever you do, right? Or you have your skills. Um, this is a great one. Direct clients to walk in front of you when touring a property. Do not lead them. This is one I see so many agents make this mistake. And when they show a client a property, they actually tour them through the property. So they're saying, so come on down here. Let's go down to the basement and I'll show you the basement. And meanwhile, freaky murderer here, axe murderer Jessica, is going to beat me over the head as we're walking down the steps and she's behind me, right? Um, but don't let them be behind you. So the Beverly Carter story, for those of you, any, but how many in here are aware of Beverly Carter story? You were there at the presentation. Yeah, so Beverly Carter was the realtor in Arkansas who, very pretty blonde, she was mid to late 50s, um, had grown kids, but she got a call to show a property, a vacant foreclosure property in her own neighborhood. It was two blocks from her own house. She and her kids drove by this house their entire lives as the kids were growing up, like it was one of the neighbor's houses. 
while it had gone, it had gone into foreclosure, it was vacant. Now it was up for sale by the agent and she got a call. I heard it was up for sale by her. No, some, another okay, agent had sorry. it listed. Um, and I'll get to that in okay. a second. So I'm glad you asked that question. So another agent had it listed, but she gets a call. Uh, um, somebody calls in, they want to see this property and they saw her on the, they found her online. They wanted her to go, you know, they'd like to go see the house, right? So it was a husband and a wife. She's talking to them. She asked for their pre-approval. They were pre-approved. They sent over their pre-approval letter. I mean, they had their ducks in a row. Um, and she had talked to both of them on the phone. And her office had a policy that female agents were not supposed to meet by themselves, unsupervised or without a, a buddy, um, male clients or leads at properties alone. And she even said this to this to this man, to this lead and the wife. She said, well, I just want to verify you're both going to be at the, at the appointment, the showing, correct? Because my office has a policy. I'm not allowed to meet by myself, you know, a man or, or one person at a property. Um, and the wife assured her, no, 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 I will be there. I promise, you know, we'll both, I'm, we're coming from work. So we're going to meet there, but I will be there. She schedules the appointment. It was for like 5.30 or six o'clock in the evening. She was supposed to be meeting her family after the showing for dinner. She goes to the house, she gets there. She's outside the house. She, she gets there early, right? Like a lot of us do, we get there early, unlocks the front door, gets the key out, all those things. Well, here drives up the husband in his car to the property. And she's, he gets out and says, hey, so my wife got stuck at the office. She got stuck at work. She was like a nurse. I don't know. They said she was a nurse or something. She got stuck at work and come to find out this was all part of their plan from the beginning, but she's stuck at work. Um, she's not going to make it, but um, she wants us to FaceTime her and she's going to join us. And so now, you know, she's getting those weird gut vibes, right? Like this is weird. I told you I wasn't, I needed both of you here to show the property and so he gets, she's like, I, I'd rather reschedule. I'd rather reschedule for another time. I'm really, you know, my office policy, we went over that. I'd rather reschedule for when you both can be here. Um, and he was like, no, hold on, hold on. Let me get her on the phone, talk to her. She, you know, you, hopefully you'll feel more comfortable. She'll explain what's happened, whatever. She, they, he gets her on the phone, FaceTime. And she's like, I'm so sorry. I'm here, I'm stuck though. I can't get there in time. Can you just please show it to my husband and keep me on FaceTime? Show me the house as you're going through it, right? You show me and, and I'll be on FaceTime with you guys the whole time. So she's on FaceTime with the wife. She agrees against her better judgment to show the house. They go in, she's showing, you know, she's showing her the house through FaceTime and the husband and talking about it. First of all, what is she now? distracted, right? Mm -hmm. She's got a distraction. She's got a phone in her hand in front of her face, his phone, because he called his wife on FaceTime. And she's trying to show the house to two people, one, a man that's walking around with her and the other one on FaceTime that she's, and she's asking her questions, right? She's asking her. So they go through the house, they get to a certain room in the house in particular. And the wife says, can you show me in the clo that closet? It looked big in the pictures. Can you show me the closet? Oh my God. Yeah, so what does she do? Yeah, sure, absolutely, right? And she goes to show her inside this closet. The husband hits her over the back of the head, knocks her unconscious, and hog taser. ties her. Taser. Did he taser? Taser. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. So she's incapacitated. Um, he hog ties her, backs his car up to the front door of the house, <clears throat> opens his trunk. The neighbor remembers seeing his car backed up to the front of the house with the trunk open, didn't say a word, didn't call the police, didn't raise alarm, didn't question it, nothing. Um, he puts her in the trunk of the car, takes her and kidnaps her. Their intention, they had been, you asked me, was she the listing agent? They had actually stalked her for months. They had studied her, they had researched her, 
they targeted her. They knew she was the one that they wanted to kidnap. Well, what was the was there? Yeah, the motive. Yep. The reason was, well, so they wanted to kidnap her. They thought she looked like a rich real estate woman, beautiful, rich real estate woman with a family that would pay her ransom to get her back, with a family that cared about her, that had money to pay to get her back, and that would pay. She, they, they knew what kind of car she drove. She drove like a Mercedes or a BMW, a nice luxury car, right? Um, she was pretty. They saw on her social media pages that she had a family. She had a husband. She had kids. They were going kids. on vacations. A lot yeah, of, like, they, they like saw her going fancy on. vacations yep, she was going right. to. But he even he told us he said that is like a massive amount of people involved in that. Like it wasn't like they were going to like you know some five star resorts and saying it was just a you know, they had a travel agent, I think he said that yeah. got them like discount on stuff. So yeah. like discount vacations they were going on. Yeah. But it, she looked like she lived this extravagant lifestyle. Right. So the son even said, we were a, a, a middle income, moderate income family. We were not super wealthy. We didn't have tons of money. Like she, you know, she, yes, she did real estate, but she wasn't like the top producer in her office killing it, making, you know, multiple six figure income. She's, she's not driving here. up in the, in the new Porsche. Right. Right. And, <laughs> Jim's not here. Oh, <laughs> I didn't say it. We need to get a used Mercedes I, for it. I didn't he say it. Well, no. <laughs> so, so, um, so, what's that? That was their perception. That was their perception. Yeah, based on all this research that they had done on her. If on you social think about media, it, what you, guys, what you guys do, that is part of the business, is you give off the perception that you are successful, are successful and you're good with money and you're, you're advising these people yeah. on these, you know, five, six, seven hundred thousand dollar transactions. It is part yeah. of the job. Yeah. And it's such a fine line. And, yeah. you know, obviously pretty but yeah. so what happened? Yeah. She, so they, so he kidnapped her. He took her back to his, their house. Where the wife was, they were literally they were legit married. She should have said, oh, "She I was can there." So get you a fat profit. Yeah, right. She was yeah. <laughs> I know. She was, yeah, she was out of it. No, she was unconscious. She wakes up in the bathroom at their house in the bathtub, tied up in the bathtub and gagged. Um, and so, in the meantime, her family they're at dinner. The guy, the husband, had actually taken her phone and texted. Whoever he texted, I guess her husband, that she was um, grabbing drinks with a friend after the showing and she'd be home late. Well, apparently she never did that. That was way out of character for her. So, of course, it threw his arm, you know, he was up in arms all, all immediately. He knew something was not right. So, um, they go back to the, his, her husband or whatever. I guess they went. He called the police. Did he call the police? He called the police. When that guy went back to the property. Oh, the police, everybody was there. They were there. Yeah, because her car was still there. So he left her car there, obviously. But her purse was there, her keys, everything was, he left her purse, he left everything. And apparently that part of their plan was that he was supposed to be taking the purse. The bank cards. And the yeah. ATM, they wanted to get money they from the ATM. They yeah. left, he left it all they there. He left which, it all there. Which, that's why he went back. The wife, they, I think he said the wife was like, you got to go back and get yeah. it. So he went back and as he's driving up, it, there's like the husband and the cops. Like there's a cop there, yeah. I believe, at that point. Did they get him? And somehow, no. So, well, not not right away. They eventually did catch them, yes. Um, but uh, so bottom line is he. it went bad. Everything went wrong. She, the wife, somehow, Beverly somehow saw the wife's face. She was never supposed to see their faces. Somehow she saw the wife's face and now she knew she knew she could identify them. So by the time the husband got back there, everything was blowing up in their faces. The police, you know, their whole timeline was blown. Their whole plan was blown. They had this whole elaborate plan and it was all blown. So they panicked. They murdered her. They dumped the body. They were eventually caught. I don't remember how they got caught. You they, remember? They, so she had already seen the face. It's everywhere. It yeah, face. Google it. So he, they yeah. take, they beat her. Oh, you're right. They, she didn't know their faces. Yeah. So they that beat her, beat her. Well, she, they opened the bathroom door and she was awake. Is what I remember. Yeah. So she was in the pub. They opened the bathroom door and she was awake and like she saw the wife and the husband came back and basically they, they beat, she beat her and they taped her entire face up. 
they didn't kill her that she suffered yeah, yeah. like he they, she was unconscious he beat her unconscious they thought she was dead she wasn't dead and taped her entire face mm -hmm. up everything like completely covered in tape and then i think like buried her in like a like a Arkansas, yeah. Arkansas. But I mean, if you so that's just one story, and you can read, you can Google it. Google Beverly Carter. Yeah, there was the a Beverly Carter line story. On yeah, another agent too that in Florida. In that, yeah, yeah, there was a dateline <laughs> on it. Why can't they just Florida? Fly, 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 fly. Yeah, I know. Easiest way to vet your clients: pre qualification from your trusted lender. But they had a pre qualification. They had one. Those people had one. They had done From all of the, the trusted lender. Well, or not that agent's they, lender, but a lender. Sure. Yeah, I don't know. They had no. I but think they, they were qualified to buy. I remember. I, I think didn't she tell even you called and confirmed yeah. the qualification they with the lender. Like they were, they went through all the hoops. Which is how they were caught. And yeah, to they, make this kind of money, a they good think story. they were. Is it right? worth it? The three, you're going to get caught. Uh, yeah, I don't know. They need enough money to disappear. That's they, sure. Yeah, that's what they were. They were young and dumb, but so she, but so she died. I mean, there's so many stories. There was a man just a couple years ago in Severn Park, Severn area, who was holding an open house at a builder's model, a construction, a home that had been built, a new construction home, and um, a man came in with a supposedly the intent to rob him, ended up shooting him in the head. He was he older, killed. older. Really. I mean, he was young. Younger. He, yeah, he was young. He had young kids. It's, I think he was in his thirties. And it gets scary because I used to do. I used to be a preferred lender for Deezer, and sometimes if the salespeople were in other homes, and I was the only one in the model, like I would sit upstairs, and like you hear people coming in, and, and they yeah. just, you know, you don't know what is. Yeah. So you, you got to be. Yeah. It is scary. So along those lines, these last two bullets, direct clients to walk in front of you when touring a property, do not lead them. So do not go in front of them. Do not ever walk down steps with them behind you or, you know what I mean? Don't go into a closet, a basement. This says attics, crawl spaces, or garages where you can be trapped. Always know your exits. Always know how to get out of there and always put yourself between the exit and the client. Right, so that you're you have a direct access to the to the exits. Never put your client between you and the exit. So you always want to be positioned in a room so that you have an easy exit, an easy way to get out. Some things to think about, and I'll be curious to see what your thoughts are on this, Jason. I've always, when I was showing houses and I would go into a property, I would lock and I met my client there. I would lock the front door behind me because then I know that nobody else is coming in right. behind us while we're up in the upstairs or down in the basement. However, the problem with that is, is now you've put a barrier to your exit, right? There's a barrier between you and the exit that the door is locked. So if I have to get out fast, that door is locked. I have to get there and get the door unlocked in a house that I'm not familiar with. Um, there's a storm door. I always shut the storm door. I'm yeah. 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 It's it's just interesting because I've been in a house before with like a you know one of my girlfriends. It's just us two girls and we're in a house and I'm showing the house. Somebody could see you. And walk in just two two That's women the other thing you have to think walk about. and they know it's for sale. They know it's vacant, especially when I'm showing houses like down in the city, Bed Hill, Canton, whatever. And I go in and I'm showing it to my single camp. girlfriend. And I'm not leaving that front door unlocked. You never know who's going to wander in behind the door. But I know my client at that point. At that point, I you know your client. That's meeting. safe. That's safe. Yeah. It's like you walking in your own house and locking the door. You know nobody inside is leaving. Yeah. But you know, we always talk about you know knowing your surroundings, this, that, and the other. When you get to, you know get to a property. Sorry, no, get to a high. property beforehand. Yeah. And, and like I do that just <laughs> because of everything I've gone through and, and, and the different trainings I've done. It's like I if I get in somewhere, I'm always looking for the exit. I know the route. If he goes crazy right now, I'm going out this door. You know what I mean? Like if somebody comes in that door, I'm going out this Might door. Might take some, a second whether to push a pull. That's yeah. right. Oh, I'll go through the door. <laughs> yeah. You know, so but you, you should know that. You should know your exit. And we were talking about they talked about this at the Beverly Carter thing. Open the window, you know, be like, okay. This living room set up here, there's no direct egress from it. I'm gonna go ahead and open the window up. So worst case scenario, I'm jumping through the screen. You know what I mean? Like you know that you set these things up beforehand, knowing if crack hits the fan. Yeah. Um, and you always just always aware of your surroundings. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I actually uh, I feel like somebody 
later on today. I was sitting there, what is one of the things that's on my mom's face? My mom started trying to figure things out. And even when I meet him, I really, um, like I said, I've been dealing with him on the phone. And the first thing I was thinking about is that I've been having his driver's license and taking that picture right there and mm -hmm. letting him know that I am sending it back to my dad for. You know, so those things like that are, you know, just talking there. It's not, I mean, we know we can battle for him. We get our mm -hmm. attention. We don't know what's in the car. It's about his mom. Yeah. It's always that thing. Even like he was saying, even once he gets out, he has no idea what's going on. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then, so keep in mind, there's a great website that I highly recommend. It's MDK Search. So just Google MDK Search. Mm -hmm. And you can look up anybody and their criminal record, any, well, anything in their court history, everything. You know, their traffic, when they get traffic tickets, DWIs, anything. Divorce. Divorce. Mm -hmm. um, MDK Search. If you just free. search MDK Search, it's free. It's like Put their Maryland name in. Record. Yeah, it is only their Maryland record. A lot of states have it, though. Yeah, they're, that's their Maryland record. All you need is their first and last name. Yeah. Um, and you kind of, I mean, if there's a lot of people with that same name, you kind of have to have, maybe have an idea of who, birthday. how old they yeah, might be. Their, their yeah, if you have the picture of their so driver's license. Sort of yeah. And those are, that's something pre vetting, right? So you're pre vetting your clients. If I don't know this person, I do it to everyone. Search on I, search I, them I, on I Facebook. Maryland can search everybody in this what room. What do I have? Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, like I, yeah. I used to look up everybody. You just pre vet, you, you know, especially being female, right? I say big versus small in class, but like female, when you're a female, you're at a disadvantage, regardless of, you know, you know woke culture, this, that, and the other, you're at a disadvantage when it comes to physical altercation. So pre vet all of your clients. There's nothing wrong with doing too much research on somebody. Yeah. There's, it's, it's your job. Like you are supposed to be qualifying these people to buy a house. You know, you're qualifying them to show them a house. You're qualifying them to meet meet up with you. But you know, and it also will help. Look, you go on a Maryland case search and pull somebody who wants to go see a you know eight hundred thousand dollar house. And they have five foreclosures in the last fifteen. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, all right, let's you, you you don't even have to look at their credit to know that hey, you know what? Let's call Keith real quick and see if we can't get you qualified before we yeah. show the property. And I know where you guys are now. And Rob and Jim have that you know. These online leads, they want you out there showing them the shiny yeah. thing first. But you know, you do have to do some due diligence when it comes to that. Um, you know, the biggest thing when, when you're talking about are you done? I was gonna go right into like, I have a couple more things. Yeah, go through your bullets because okay. I'm trying to like spin it right into the getting up and moving around yeah, yeah, stuff. Yeah. But um, so the other thing to keep in mind and pay attention to is how and where you're parking your car. So, how are you parking your car at the property? Park it on the street. Park it in a place where, and this is this goes for just driving. When you're out driving, I was taught this when I was a teenager, and I started driving. I think my dad taught me. You always want to have space between your car and the car in front of you when you stop at a red light or when you're at a stop sign. But when you park it, make sure that you'll be able to get out in an emergency if you have to. So don't park your car in a in a a single file driveway first where they can block you in, right? Because if you have to get out. And you're parked like that, and they, their car has blocked you in. Where are you going to go? You're you going to run? You, you ever see cops not park car? You ever see a cop pull in head first in the parking no, lot? No, Never. No, they no, will they're always back in. back in. The reason being, shots fire, blah, blah, blah. They're in and on. Yeah. Something happens to you in your car, and you go. Well, well, they're in front of me. I can plow through them, right? With the husband being bad, she was technically still alive. Right. How? Like when did the, all the police and people not yeah. see? He just it was in the neighborhood. He didn't, he drove no, he just, he drove he didn't stop. He, didn't he stop. just kept driving. Back. He kept driving. But it was his wife's car, right? No, 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 no. The the canal, the, the bad guy. And they and they know all of this because they came asked, back to the property to get. They the interviewed them after the fact. They yeah. called them. They told them everything. They told them everything. Yeah. They told them how they how they killed her. What happened? Stalked why they her, her. Researched her. her. Yeah. yeah. I guess she, she, she got she got Yeah, I think she gave him up. She got free right. Because he's the one that yeah, they do. He got he got the first one to turn and get He got life. He got life in prison, I think. And he's up for parole. He just was up for yeah. parole last year. Yeah. And she got she only got 20 years. I think 15 or 20 years. Women are like that. They just first the talk, first yeah. the wall. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so how you park your car is important, making sure that you can get out. So this is the, the National Association of uh, Realtors website, all of the different resources that they have for you for safety. 
So just be aware of what's there and what tools what you have. Mace? Um, they want to talk about that. What, what? Mace? Mace? Okay. Yeah. I'll talk about I'm going to let Jason talk about that when we get to weapons, but yeah. Um, I'll just throw bear mace. There you go. Is it legal? But some counties, bear, bear spray that. is not <laughs> legal. Just like, and I know, and I, I mean, it's the whole question of I would you rather be carried, come, I spray with this. judged by 12 or carried by six, right? Um, oh, okay. <laughs> um, so in your packet, in the paperwork I handed out to you, is this prospect identification form. This is in dot loop. So you have access to this in dot loop. This is a form that you can send to your clients to fill out and get back to you um, with their identification. But remember, you're not necessarily, and you, but you can do this. This is really meant to be done on site when you get there because it asks for their um, license number, their make and model of their car, their license plate, and send a copy of the driver's license and then any other photo ID with this form. So you can have you can have this with your buyer packet. You can get it filled out at that time and send it in when you're there for the showing. Um, however you want to do this, but this is there for you. Obviously, if you're meeting a Zillow or an Op City lead, you're not going to be able to send this to them and say, "Before I meet you, can you fill this out, please?" They're going to freak you out. Can fill it out there. At, yeah, um, at right outside, property. in on on the hood of your car, standing out. In yeah, the curb, exactly. And see it, take a picture of it and know. with their driver's and license and, and, it, and send it. Send it to What's the that? Yeah, before, before you go, go in. Before you go yeah, in. yeah, yeah, before you go in. And blame it on me. Tell them, oh, my broker, she's really strict about agent safety. This is an office policy. You know, I could lose my, my job with my brokerage if I don't send this in for each showing that I go on with a new client before I go into the property. Yep. And use what Beverly Carter did. I mean, she said her office had a policy that she wasn't allowed to meet men alone at properties that she didn't know, that she didn't have, you know, a connection or relationship with. Use that um, and have more than one person. But I would rather take my chances, my odds against one man alone at a property than two or three men at a property. <laughs> so just be careful what you ask for and how you ask for. Or even the man and the woman, even the woman was there. She was this in on it too. A false sense of security. I know. Like women right. can be just as evil. Yes, I know. Look at them, look at the city murderers. Look at them. Oh, yeah. That girl, if you would have met her, you would never think she was a murderer. And the thing she did, mm. you know, they did as a couple together. Yeah. Another yeah, couple. That was my first thought. I was like, how successful is life? Like, that's right. Like, yeah, because people do with a woman. Yeah. yeah. You don't think I, a woman is. And people think, I think, people think, I think people think, oh, they're married. Yeah. They're caught. Like, it, it brings down your defenses for most oh, people. Yeah. Not everybody, but a lot of people. I was like, there's two of them. Yeah. 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 yeah, right. Yeah. It's I was like a crime joke podcast every day. I'm like, I'm aware. It's a it's a it's a it's a side effect of the society that we as Americans live in. If you yeah, wow. you take if you take that mentality and go any any other non first world country, yeah. absolutely not. Nobody yeah. trusts anybody in this place. People yeah. get murdered, stabbed, and robbed daily, you know, on a daily basis anywhere, any other any anywhere else you go in the world. We talk like the Israelis and they talk about like our mentality versus you know the rest of the world it's just we've gotten too accustomed to feeling safe just walking down the street and it's it's, it's not that way it is a little bit here in this country it's getting worse and worse as things progress but like it's not that bad i mean you know i i don't walk down the street of baltimore by no, myself no, i don't either i live there and i do too i'm like i would never i'm not i hate walking down here hmm. even like canton downtown canton you know leave the bars two o'clock in the morning you get robbed yeah. and oh, murdered yeah. and raped. I had friends that have gotten jumped and beaten and mugged in the middle it's of the just all about downtown, them. leaving bars. You're in mentality. Yeah, yeah. And just awareness, bringing awareness to and, and being more aware of every situation and the potential for danger in every situation. This next one, this last one that I want to go over before I hand it over to Jason is resources for personal protection. This is on the National Association of Realtors website as well. And they're all links, so you can click into any of them, and it'll give you the link to that product or more information about each one. But think about there's all different things out there. There's products. Um, there are also there's jewelry that are GPS um, track jewelry that can show your location, and it actually has a an emergency button on it that you press that emergency button, and it just puts out a distress signal to your emergency contacts. 
they have it as it's a company and I can't, I don't know if it's this where save or where, but um, pressing the where save tramp stamp. Trust stamp. Yeah. Um, but there's another one. So there's one that this one's different. It's a tag that keeps you, uh, sends out an alert. But this jewelry, I'll have to look at the name of it because I actually have it at home. They have keychains, they have bracelets, they have like necklaces, and um, it's basically an emergency button that you can push and it's GPS enabled so that it sends out a distress call to whoever you set up in, this, in the system. So all of these are awesome tools. The ones that I wanted to show you real quick before we, um, before I hand it over to Jason. Did you have something you wanted to add? Oh, okay. So in HomeSnap, in the HomeSnap app, and I'll put this up on the screen. You have a safety timer in the HomeSnap app that you can utilize as well. Um, so I recommend using either this one or the one in Central Lock. So if you go into a property, when I go into a property that's listed, um i just have the i don't pay anything for it so this is just the one that you get with your bright mls um subscription what did you say it does it does i'll show it to you i know right i gotta find an active listing that's the challenge first so when i find an active listing so remember, you can schedule a showing with showing time through your HomeSnap app, right? But notice right above that, two steps above that is start a safety timer. So when I go in here and click in, there's my safety timer. So how long do you plan to be here? So remember, when I'm going to a showing, I'm getting there early, right? I, I can't recommend enough to you guys. Always arrive to your showings early, your open houses early. But particularly showing, you want to open the front door, open the, get the key out of the lockbox. Cause here's another really bad thing that most of us do. The clients get there, right? Here's ax murderer, Jessica behind me. And Hey, Jessica, I'm going to open up the front door. Let's go in and see the house. Right. And then what do I do? One, two, three, four, I'm unlocking five, the lockbox. Right, with my back to her. That's like 10 seconds of you not knowing what that person is doing. Right, I have no idea what she's doing behind me. And I'm unlocking the lockbox. I get the key out. I unlock the door. Hopefully, I get into the front door. And then, yeah, <laughs> crazy whack knocks me over the back of the head. So, but the safety timer, do this ahead of time. When you arrive, start your timer. What happens if it time runs out? If it times out, it, it sends an alert to your emergency contact that you oh, picked. Yeah. But your emergency so, contact is you. No, I know. No, but it's, <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know. I, I have not picked. It says pick your emergency contact. I have to click on add up there at the top. And now I can search in my contacts who I want. So if I want to set it as Jason. I can pick Jason as my emergency contact. Which you can all do, by the way, because I, my job's not really important. I can leave anytime. <laughs> right? Something goes off, I can go show up. Yeah. So now, if I, do you have your phone in here or no? So now, if I set my safety timer for five minutes, I'm just going to set it. And then I'm going to, when it goes off, it'll show you guys, he'll show you guys what he gets. Or notice what pops up too, right? Distress alert. So my safety timer is set for that property. If I'm in distress, if I need to call out immediately, I can hit distress alert. I'll just hit it. It's the same as showing. I did, I did, see what I happens. Did, I did the year one time. My phone, my phone moved the phone. So it says home staff is notified, Jason, that you may need assistance. Tina Hyde is in distress at 6556 Meadowfield Court, Alfreds, wow. Maryland. Call 911. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so that's the distress signal that it sends to Jason. Is that what happened? This is the one in home snap. No, I so I'll show you the one in there's one in showing time. Yeah. So I'll show you that one also. So like Yeah, so that's the home snap distress the safety timer. Showing time also or central lock. I know I think they both have it, but they also have them. So top right corner. Um yeah, start showing beacon. Oh, so when you're in showing time, at the top right corner, the little hamburger, whatever you want to call it, down at the bottom, start showing beacon. Now, same thing. When I go into showing time, 
I put in my name, Tina Hyatt. Um, actually, that's my person that I wanted to call. So that's not me. That's my emergency contact. Again, obviously, I will call myself. So you put your safety beacon person in, whoever that might be. So I put in Jason. I hit save. And then how long I'm going to be in that property for? 30 minutes. It won't let me start the beacon until I put somebody's phone number in there. What's your cell number? 244-5853. I hit save. And now I can put in five minutes, start showing beacon. And it says you've started a showing timer that will expire in five minutes. When it expires, a message with your name, phone number, and location will be sent to your preferred contact. So now here's my timer, right? Mm -hmm. So I can also click send showing beacon now. What happens if I send that? Hold for three seconds. It says showing beacon last sent to Jason. It should send you my location. Your name, phone number, and location is sent to 240. Tina Hyatt, contact number, location 39.209. It gives me latitude and longitude. <laughs> She's standing right beside you. <laughs> She's in the turn left and look. Oh. <laughs> well, does it really say like the straps or anything? Or it says an automated message from showing time agent might need assistance showing beacon from Tina High. Contact number, your phone number, location gives me um, latitude and longitude. I don't know. Does it feel off time? Does it feel like after a couple of minutes? Um, if you don't turn it off, it sends out the alarm, correct? Yeah. Um, yes. If you don't turn it off, it'll send the alarm. So now I can't get out of here. Okay, there we go. So um, I set my showing beacon, so now it's done. My showing, this, this showing timer is done, okay? So there's just two, and there's several timers out there. I think Centralock also has one that when you're in the showing, when you're in the property, you can set a timer on when you- I feel like I have to. Remember. Yeah, I think there's a showing timer, but you have to be in like when you're opening the lockbox at that appointment. Um, but, um, let me see if it's on here. But so, yeah, so I just want the, the key is, and there's two that you guys can use that you have access to free. So I just wanted to make sure you had that information that you know our distress signal, that you have some of the tips to use for scheduling appointments and showing properties. So now I'm gonna let Jason take over. Um, I'm done. Wow, yeah, look right? at this big class we have, sir. Where did Louie Baton go? I don't know. She's got her baton, so I guess she's not worried about it. I'm going to turn it around. What? That thing is so much They can use it again. Right. They can say with the gun. I mean, it's the same with the gun. That's what I was going to say. Shoot them before they get to that point. Yeah. With what Pete said, like mace or different weapons that you can use, they're only as good as what you can do. I mean, so is she walking around with this the entire time? Something happens. Go and start That's smacking different. people it's in your bag. It's in your pocket. Mace is the same thing. Like a lot of the maces, we have some at the gym that do a different format. So they're like, you have to flip it up, put your finger in, and spray. Bear mace, you know, this is a big can of yeah, spray sure and everything. Nice. Um, the other thing you have to understand about mace is, is if I spray Tina in the face right now with mace, every oh, really? single person in here is not going to be able to see. Oh. Oh. So you're using that either doesn't affect you. Not as much. That is true. Mason pepper spray does not affect like one percent. It does affect me, but I can work through it. But like if I sprayed her, the wind is just gonna especially in enclosed air, you can't see. You're not gonna be able to see, especially somebody close enough. You pull that mace out and spray them in the face, you're done. You better know incapacitated itself as well. Where you can go I sprayed the other day with your eyes closed. So like I if I sprayed my they break check me. Give me um let's move out of the way a little bit. Yeah. There's not a lot of us. I got a good one. <laughs> Wait, this is the person you're going to go meet today? 
Well, it might not be the same person. Right. So I was gonna say, yeah. I can't worry about you. She got this. <laughs> so they have different. <laughs> Come into my arena, my, my beautiful people. <laughs> so when we talk about basic self-defense, you guys were the last one. You've done it before. You have it really, right? So the biggest things we factor in, um, the first thing we talk about when we're talking about self-defense is awareness, right? So situational awareness, any awareness whatsoever. So um, I have been diagnosed. I'm hyper alert. So like I'm hyper aware all the time. So I notice what everybody's wearing, where they're this, that, and the other. Some people aren't like that. When I always talk in these classes, your real estate agents and, and we're talking about stepping outside to go show a house and need something like that. I would say as soon as your foot steps out of your car, you are on the clock. You are hyper aware of everything. Meaning you are focused on one solid thing, nothing else. When you're on your computer putting in a contract and somebody comes up to have a conversation, you're you're giving them like partial attention because you're focused on this. When you're out showing houses and you're out working with clients, you are hundred percent focused on that person. Anything else that's coming around you should just be a secondary. Um, because we need to know that if Jess pulls out a gun, what's going to happen? I, you know, she can do it in two seconds. Well, once it registers with me and I react, now we're at three, four, five, six seconds. She's always going to win. That's when you see like quick draw, right? It, it, it's, it's all about your reaction time. But if you're not paying attention, if I'm on my phone texting this person while I'm showing the house, she pulls out that baton, smacks it, I see it, see it, and by the time I turn, it's already swinging at my face and it's dead. So we always have to be aware. As soon as you step out of your car, you are on the clock. You are 100% focused on that person. The house is there. You're showing, hey, look at this. It's really pretty. You look over here. It's really pretty, right? I'm, I'm, I don't need to look. I already saw it. I'm not like, oh, hey, look at this. You know, look right there. Right there. Yeah. But anyway, we always talk about being hyper alert and hyper focused. Um, I always use this room as, as a reference because it always happens in here. Where are the exits? Right? One and two, right? Exactly. So as soon as you walk into a room, you should know how you're going to get out. If it's the same way you came in, like she talked about before, you position yourself that way. If I'm showing you guys this room, you're all my clients, and I'm the real estate, and we all walked in, I'm standing right here, right by this door, because if she goes crazy, I'm out. If I'm where Keith is, and she goes crazy, she's going to get here before Keith can get to there, so now we have to fight her. You have to consciously be aware of where, where <laughs> you are, <laughs> um, where you are, and what's, what's going on around you. Um, he probably beat my ass with that. <laughs> <laughs> too. Um, so always alert, always aware of what's going on. Um, the other aspect we are, I always talk about when it comes to the self-defense situation, we go from zero to a hundred. That's there's no in between. There's no ten percent, twenty, thirty, forty. It's zero to hundred percent. You set that boundary up. You know when a hundred clicks in. So like, can you stand there for me? Right in the middle. Keith, I'm gonna borrow you. So Keith, I want you to stand all over in the corner right there. So if you're in a scenario right now, you're just out of the bus station, right? You're at a bus station, standing there by yourself. How uncomfortable on a scale of one to ten do you feel right now if you're standing right there? You're looking this way. You, you just you know you're there. Yeah. How how uncomfortable? Am I just standing there? You're just you're just standing there, right? You don't know this person. You're at a bus stop. There's nobody else around. Yeah. You're three. Keith, take about five. Just come parallel to her. Stay far away, but parallel. How uncomfortable do you feel now? Four or five. Four or five. And why? Because you can probably see him, right? You can see him yeah. a little bit more and he looks yeah. kind of scary, this, that, and the yeah. other. All right, go take a step back, <laughs> back by that, right at that table right there. Same idea. How uncomfortable do you feel now? Yeah, a little bit more seven. uncomfortable. Yeah. That's parallel to her. So walk right up, right, right up. <laughs> Now I'm not scared. Again, scared. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, when it comes to feeling comfort or not yeah. comfort, when you can see them, you are more comfortable because yeah. you can see. And if, if he started, you're looking at me, right? You're not even looking yeah. at him. Look at her. Look at her face. You can see him looking yeah. at her face, right? Uh -huh. you, why is he staring? Not right. in your head. Why is he staring at me? Why is he staring at me? Why is he staring at me? Go behind. <laughs> go, go, about, go about four feet behind her. Immediately behind her, but about four. Oh, yeah. Back up a little bit. Back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. <laughs> But you, you know he's there. Yeah. You just, oh, yeah, right? Yeah. So you're at like an eight, nine, yeah. Yeah. out right behind you. Now, granted, yeah. you're, at a, <laughs> now, granted, you're at a bus station for that, yeah. that, you know, you're in this little box thing type yeah. thing. Two people always come, you know, wait for the bus like this. Yeah. But like, you, you, we talk about your internal <laughs> alarm, your internal, internal comfort level. He came close to you immediately and started to do that. That's Tina's threshold. He passed her threshold. For Jessica, it might have been when he was standing over there and she's like, that's this. And she's like, I used to ride the bus every day. 
Yeah, like <laughs> so what what you determine as as zero to a hundred is based off of your comfort, what you're comfortable doing. I can tell you right now, Pete could literally be in my face yelling and screaming at me, and I'm probably gonna be just super calm as I am normally because I know that if he does hit me, I'm going to kill him. <laughs> that's, because, that's because I know what I can do. But somebody else, we're talking big or small. If somebody crosses whatever this bubble is that she has, that her comfort zone, that her alarms are going off immediately, especially as females. You, you have that, right? Women do feel a lot stronger than men. As soon as you feel that, that unease, like that, that cross. I always say, you know, there's an adult in here. You fuck off. That's when you fuck off. You're going home. Yeah. Just cancel whatever you're going to do and just leave. Because nine, I'd rather be wrong than dead or anything else that worse that can happen. You know, and you can always apologize when we're talking about you're my client and I'm meeting you at a property and I meet you. Hey, how's it going? This and that we're going to go see the property. If you do something or say something or wear something or doing something that gives me that this and that. You know what? I, I double booked myself. I apologize. Let's go ahead and reschedule it for tomorrow or whatever it may be. Girls do this a lot when they're dating, right? You're like, send me a text message or call me in five yeah, minutes. Get me out of here. There's an emergency. You can set those things up. So if you have that PDG, I'd rather apologize to this person than be dead or murdered on, you know, in a basement somewhere. So you have to factor that. How uncomfortable is everybody now? So when we talk about when we talk about Nick, Nick stand here, so now uh -huh. here, Nick stand here. So when we're talking about a male perspective on things, let me know when you feel uncomfortable. Don't move. Just let me know when you when you feel uncomfortable. You're out in the out of the bus station by yourself, right? You're a guy, and I want you to be honest. Let me know when you feel uncomfortable. Okay. <laughs> see, see yeah. his boundaries a little bit close. Like that's when you're gonna be like, what, what, yeah. what, what are you doing? And all I was doing I was walking, walking by, just yeah. walking towards. Him. He could be standing on the edge of the road, in the side that he's in the middle of the sidewalk. This is a normal how a normal person would walk by him because he's yeah. standing there, right? But if 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 he sees me and I'm just walking at, especially if I'm looking at you, like look the other way, like you don't even really notice me. You feel me looking at you right now? Yeah. Yeah, you can. You can all feel that. You know when somebody's looking at you, you get that feeling you're looking at the bus. Do I know this person? <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I always say, I always I, by the way, this stuff, this stuff happens in the real world. This stuff happens in the real world a lot where I will look, you know, people are looking at me, especially if I'm walking with you and people, right? You know, you're walking with a pretty girl and people are always looking. I, I'm surprised I haven't been in a million fights. I'll be at the mall and I'm walking and Nina's gonna turn to people like, am I wearing your fucking shirt? Like, I will literally look at somebody like, am I wearing your shirt? I say it all the time to people. <laughs> Do I know you? Am I wearing your, is this your shirt? Like, look the other way. Like, yeah. because that makes me feel uncomfortable and it also restricts my confidence for that person. They're not gonna do whatever it is they're gonna do, whether it's like cat calling my girlfriend or, you know, whatever it is. I just, I'm kind of an asshole. But when we talk about <laughs> your comfort level, as soon as you feel a trigger, 100%. You are at 100% defensive and alert, and nothing else matters except your safety. And for you guys, when you're out showing property, it is getting back to your car, locking the doors, and then going home, right? That's the safe place, right? So that's why I say when you unlock the door and you step your foot out of the car, it's on. Yeah. Everything is on. I know what is going on. I am looking around and said, get to the property early. You should be at the property early. Walk around the outside. Make sure. Things are the way they're supposed to be. If you walk around the outside of the property and you see the window's been busted out, are you going to go in that house? No. Wow. How many of you actually walk around the outside of a property before you go unlock the door? Very few. Yeah. Nobody does. Yeah. But again, this you house, my hands off now. I right. this this house is listed for sale, especially if. Especially if, <laughs> and I was here the other day, and the window wasn't busted. exactly. Yeah. Imagine, it's, imagine it's like your <laughs> listing, it's a vacant property that's your listing. You know what it's supposed to be. Do you still walk around the property and check? No, but I can guarantee you right now, if you call a police officer and say, Hey, something fishy is going on at this yeah. house, the very first thing they're going to do is walk around the entire yeah. property yeah. Cool. because then they're going to know windows busted out, that gun is coming out because they do not know what is inside. And they know somebody's inside is not supposed to be inside. You should have the same mentality. You should know if something is going on in that property, red light or you know, red flag, everything goes off. And then you back do that. in the car. Yeah, you pull out you, yeah. you get your concealed <laughs> carry with you all. I guess I could technically do that if it was not. No, 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 you can't. You can't go looking yeah. for danger. No, I just see what's happening.
Yeah. Oh, like, oh, hell yeah. Well, and you see how you do that when you're clearing the house. I've got to get a screwdriver before. You can't clear a house. It's not your property. You can clear your own house. I'm not a screwdriver and I clear the house. Remember, Marilyn did protect your castle. Defend your castle wall. You can only defend your castle. You guys you guys you guys would have went over that in your concealed yeah. carry, right? You can't yeah. just be we like, oh, hold on, there's somebody in the towel. Let me put you know, you can't go in the towel. <laughs> so the room. Um, but you know, you have your survive bed. Uh, you have your concealed carry. We'll get to the weapon. So if you have a weapon, again, I keep saying a weapon is only as good as what you can do with it. And if I pull out a gun and don't shoot you, and you get that gun away from me, you're going to shoot me. If I pull out a knife, Stay away, and I you get this knife. Now I'm fighting somebody who has a knife, yeah. fighting somebody who has a gun, <laughs> fighting somebody who has a baton. So I'm gonna get beat. You're gonna get beat. Baton, baton, baton. Baton. Yeah. And here's and here right, we'll go right into we're, we're running over on time. We'll go right into the weapons aspect right now. So here's here's the thing I can tell you about these. These are awesome, by the way. I love asses, right? So this is an ass for trackable baton. Police officers use these a lot. Um, if I pull this out. And unless I am highly trained and used to it, and he is just a normal person that's accosting me, and I pull this out, my brain, my mentality is not going to be okay with just cracking him. He could be running at me full force, and unless I know for a fact that I can do what needs to be done, I will hit him. And any weapon, unless you've trained with it on a regular basis, guns, knives, sticks, whatever it is, Unless you train with it on a regular basis, you will hesitate and you will lose. Because if I pull this out, so the track it and just is running at me, and I, and I go, like, get away. And she keeps coming. By the time I get ready to swing, she's going to be too close. It's going to be ineffective. And now her and I are fighting. The weapon gets dropped. Now she picks it up. And she's a crazy person. She's going to start falling to me on the head. So if you have a weapon, you have to use it. I'm like, bring this word. I was going to say that. I'm going to take it out of the pit now. Yeah, charge, charge Jim. <laughs> Exactly, you know? but yeah. again, that, crazy. Intern I'm gonna be okay. that internal alarm goes off. Yeah. Wait, is <laughs> are you are you worried about them getting home to their family or you getting home to your family? Oh, I don't yeah. care about anybody in this room right now. If it has to do with me going home safe. I mean, that's not true because I have like, took my personality. Not the person I want to go into the pocket. I took my purse, I took my personality <laughs> test, and apparently I am I'm very about laying my life on the line. I'm a protector, so you have to email Michael. I can run with you as long as you not somebody and push you first with somebody else. So when we talk about <laughs> basic defenses, so I'm gonna borrow you told me how to use my phone. Yeah, so basic defenses. So you and I are standing here, I'm a bad guy, you're a good guy. We're not really doing, you know, it's not like fight, you know, like I'm just like, hey, whatever, blah, 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 blah. But if I do this, exactly. It's like natural reaction. You have minimal fight training in your life, right? So, like, if I just come in and just start swinging for you, that's what he's going to do. It doesn't matter which way I do it, doesn't matter what's happening. He is just going to, yeah, exactly. You know, this, this is this is the basis of Rav Maga self defense. It's what we call a 360 block. It's 360 degrees. The very first thing anybody's going to do. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, girls don't do that. <laughs> girls don't need to. Girls don't do that. It hurts too. But they still, in a way, right? So if I, if, if, if he has his hands down at this point, I'm walking up to him. You can see on my face if I'm coming to give you a hug, a kiss, or I'm going to punch you in the face, right? Because you can see it in his eye, right? So if I'm walking up to you like this and I just swing, all he has to do is just stop it from hurt from hitting him in the face, right? Because if he doesn't, it's gonna smack him in the face. Realistically, his hand should be up, open. Hey, get out of my face. Right? I call this the this the it, it's so in Krama God, we have three different stances. This is passive stance, this semi-passive, right? So this is not threatening, right? If if Nick is yelling and screaming crazy person at me, you're the bad guy and I'm the good guy, right? So you're just coming close to me. Right? And I put my hands up like this. Does that look like I want to fight you? No, it doesn't. If I if you come in and I'm just like like this, you're gonna be like, all right, we're fighting, you know. <laughs> so it's not gonna trigger anything. Hey, I call this the relax, get out of my face. Bouncers use this a lot too. You need to calm down, you need to calm down. Everything can be done from this position. So if Nick goes and throws a crazy smack to my face, all I have to do is just literally push my hand out. Oh. And if you swing really, really hard, how 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 much pain are you gonna tire of Swing really hard, try to hit me in the face. As hard as you possibly can. 
I'm here. <laughs> it's very painful to him. Yeah. Very, very painful yeah. to him. So yeah. let's, I want you guys to smack each other. We have an evenish number of normal people. So grab, grab a partner. It's a lot of fun. Trust you, me. A lot of fun. You can work with teams. Okay, so, all right, so, so first, things, first things first, first things first, one person's a good guy, one person's a bad guy, okay? Yeah, yeah backups just don't fall into a chair. One person's a good guy, all I want you to do, listen, 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 all I want you to do, your hands are up like this, not like this, they're not completely out, it's natural, right? Leave me alone, I don't want any trouble, back away. Right, they're out away from my face. They're not up close. It's, it's like in between, all the way out and all the way close. My hands are up like this. If they're swinging with the right hand, just imagine it's called a haymaker, right? Big old punch comes this way. All you're doing is meeting it with the bony part of your wrist, bony part of your hand, and it is we call these striking defenses, right? It is a strike, right? So just start doing that. Just start swinging right side, swinging to the left side. <laughs> This is like your death. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I don't work out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. So you can uh, uh, yeah. 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 I like yeah. 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 Good. Switch if you have it. Switch if you have it. Just to get an idea. This person throws a strike, we are now fighting, right? I am fighting whether he wants me to or not. So I relax, leave me alone. He keeps coming forward and he throws a strike at me. I'm going to hit him as well. Oh, I just want to borrow his thing. You did not listen to my verbal command, right? So he throws a strike and I'm just, I'm just going to, I like palm strikes because if you throw punches, and then move it, I'll break my hand, right? So, we, oh, well, snap. We, yeah, yeah. We <laughs> palm strike is just open hand, palm right okay. to I do forehead. <laughs> Technically, it's soft, hard versus soft. I'm going for his nose, right? So, as soon as he hit me hard enough, I could die. <laughs> so, I have my hands up, he's not listening. He throws that big looping strike to try to hit me. Bam, I'm just going to strike it here, and then I'm going to continue to strike as he until he falls down the ground. So, same thing we just did. This is called a 360 defense with a simultaneous attack, right? I'm going to block it and strike him right in the. I would prefer you guys hit each other's forehead, don't hit each other's nose because he knows when to clean up blood. But in a real life situation, if I smash Nick in the face with my palm, his nose will explode. There will be blood everywhere. I potentially could break it, which is very painful, and his eyes are going to immediately tear up. He is no longer able to see. Now there's DNA. And there's so DNA. That's a good one, too. <laughs> and my hand oh, hurts because he blocked the shit out of me. Correct. <laughs> so when we, do our, when we do our 360 defenses, we're doing it just like that. I'm meeting their strike, and at the same time, I'm looking at it. Because I know where his face is right in front of me because he didn't listen, right? So I don't <laughs> bang right here, and if he doesn't fall at that point, nah. When I'm coming with all the good stuff, right? So, block and tap to the forehead. Same idea, just go back and forth a couple times and try to just touch him on the forehead. Be gentle, don't really <laughs> snap. I don't want to do this. What do you want to do? Um, attacker. I'll be the attacker this time. Again, your hands are up because they're not listening to you, they're not staying away. <laughs> I don't like an attack. Like. I guess I the same time. Like, I can defend myself if I have to, and I'm not good at play defense. You're attacking. You just come in with the same time. So, I'm not at all, man. I'm like, I don't want to hit anybody. I don't even want to play hit anybody. I'm not at all. 
What about elbow? What about elbow? elbow? You go up. You can go up. No, we'll break. I have to hit you with a baseball bat. Right, so remind me now. In your brain. You're probably going to be in the system. Yeah, I'm going to <laughs> Wait, okay, got it. Locking it. Yep. Okay. Locking it. I yeah. asked for the one. Good. All right. So, real quick. Uh, that one. Tina, who are you? So, Tina is here. And I am I am a bad person. She is not in a fighting situation right now. She does know that something is wrong, so her hands are going to be up. She's talking. Stay away, stay away, stay away, stay away. I'm going to swing at her head and she's going to do the defense of what happens. So it's like in my hand right there. Oh. Right? So it does not matter if it's a hand, a knife, a brick. It cannot get to her. And she just smashed me in the forehead, which is going to cause me to fall back. Gives her the ability to step off. Or she can do all the other good stuff that we, we taught her for, um, which is usually the fall, 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 fall. <laughs> but that defense is perfect in this country. This is what you see when it comes to knives, if there are knives, because people see me and think usually I'm usually yeah. passionate, very, very passionate. It's not a methodical, I'm going to kill this person like prison. You see that, right? But in a real, I hate you, ah! and that's, that's what that is. Even if I did land this, she's probably going to be perfectly okay, because it's all bone straight down. I'd have to like hit her multiple times in order to that's actually That's why most stab in prison, they don't die. Correct. Just, so if I'm coming, ah, it's very passionate, and I'm... She Maybe just smashed me in the nose. She's probably going to kick me in the groin next because that's what she knows to do. But <laughs> it, it eliminates the knife threat. It eliminates the knife, right? So we don't have to worry about boom. And when I say reaching out to it, because if you don't, if you catch it here and the knife is poking in the eyes, you just always want to. But try that. Try it with just a knife staff, which is a lot of fun. Ooh, There's a couple of them over here. Oh, my. Oh, 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 nice. See, I, I guess when you go to stab somebody, like, when I carry a knife, oh, we're doing knife fight. That's the only reason she came in here. He's a partner. Seriously. So, 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 remember the strike itself is hitting their arm. You don't really know they have a knife. Surprise attack. Their hands are down, but over the top, it's just a passage you're chapter. Like from far away. Away. So like, we're just doing so out of hands up. He comes in with a crazy knife at me. I'm just blocking you here. I'm sorry, I heard. Look how, how she's my room. I'm out of room. She got the weapon, girl. I take the weapon. Bang. I'm just going to kick so hard. 
And by the way, this should be your go-to if you're ever in a fight. I don't care how macho you think you are. Somebody comes up to me, if Jim came in here, it's like, I'm going to kill you. Please don't hurt me. I'm going to kick him in the bean bag so hard and so many times. I don't care how big they are, they will fall to the floor. So when we do this defense, even if it's a punch, if it's a brick, if it's a rock, if it's a knife, we block the threat, counter strike, and then finish however we can. If you want to keep bang, bang, and bang and punch them in the face, that's perfectly fine. I teach boom, kick here, run, run, run. Yeah. run. Because <coughs> boy, you know, it's going to stop them. The body will stop no matter what. So they can get up and, just, ah! and start coming at them, right? So you just want to what make? Yeah, ah! you just want to get out of there. You kick them in the, you kick them in the, in the and again, when we talk about comfort level, pulling out a weapon and smashing somebody over the face, every single female in there has hit the guy in the room at some point in life, even if you were like a real kid. Like, it is happening. It is naturally okay for you guys to do that. Every single one of us have been kicking it right at some point in our life. So as soon as you go to do it, he felt it and he felt they weren't even kicked. I guarantee you they had a little twinge of something like, oh, yeah, that looks like my hurt. If you throw that foot up there, you're kicking to the ceiling. I don't care who they are because they crossed that threshold. Grab what? You just punched them in the face. You just a quick. Yeah, they're already doing it. Here's, 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 here's the psychology. So here's the psychology behind weapons, right? Right now, fair fight. Right? This is a fair fight. I have the advantage. The only thing that I'm worried about is this. I have it. I need to use it on him. He can grab my arm. Literally, he can be just grab hold on to it. I'm gonna be, I can be punching him in the face with the other hand. This, this, give me this, give me that. It happens 99% of the time. Watch CCTV video, this, that, and the other. Any weapon that's involved with it, that's the only thing they care about. I could be kicking him and punching him and biting him with the other weapons that I have, but my mentality is I gotta get this knife. Also, because I don't want him to get it because then he can stab me. So they're only worried oh, about that. And then you kick him in the groin multiple times and run away. There's psychology behind these guys. These guys. The psychology behind it is that the weapon is the number one focus. You see a lot when you have like robberies and you have to be on your money type scenarios. So yeah, as soon as they grab the, grab the knife, they're just fighting for the knife. They don't care about anything else. It's just they just want the weapon. Um, when we talk, Nick, here's your groin. Keith, here's your groin. Yeah. So this is these are these are now don't really put it in your front. You can if you want. Stand it like this. Just hold it like this. So here's what I want you guys to do. Semi-passive stance. We have our hands up. Stay away, stay away, stay away. We the groin guys are not listening. And we're just walking up. Just drop the hand. Just with all of your might, what I will tell you does not matter what shoe you wear. Flip flops are perfectly okay too. I'm not kicking with my toe. I'm kicking with my knee to my toe. Oh. Something is going to hit. Shin the goal shin. should be, like, I was a very bold in my class, I want to put my toe up their ass, which means I'm going to hit them the groin with my shin. I want that toe to go in behind their butt. So, because if I aim, if I just aim for it and they move back a little bit, I'm a miss, right? Aim small, miss small. If you aim for something small, you're going to you miss it, you miss it by a little bit. So, like, just hold it out, just like that, and just go buck wild. You kick like a girl. <laughs> Come on, you kick like, kick like, ah! exactly. nice. walk around, let me kick you in the ground. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> you came off, hit me in the stomach. I, you know, like, it hurt. <laughs> Damn. Sorry, it's going to come again. <laughs> 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 The smell is in it. I'm doing 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 it. i am don't, you better hold on. Hey, stop. <laughs> <laughs> you want to me? <laughs> Come on, Sanji, you want to get your get kicked in the groin? Come on in. So when we talk about striking with efficiency, right? 
So me and Keith are fighting. I don't want to sit here for five minutes punching Keith in the face because he's going to be punching me in the face, right? Yeah. Big versus small. And I say that when I say male versus female, right? Big Jim versus little, like, let's say little Kayla, right? You know, like she can hit him with all of her might. It's barely going to hurt. But if she kicks him in the groin twice, it's equalizing. It is degrading. But I think that's why God designed us that way. It's like, you know what? Yeah, they're being strong, but we're just going to put that little cancel button right, right. there. <laughs> Yeah, and that's the thing when, when you're when you, yeah well, when, i'm when, not fighting unless it's fighting yeah, when we, when we, when we talk about the martial art part that i teach i don't teach like all right are you ready i'm ready you ready set go i'm like keith leave me alone i don't even care if he's really trying to hurt me i'm gonna kick him in the groin right off the bat just because sucker punch <laughs> kick to the groin we do we teach all of that when you're out in the real world and somebody crosses that comfort level that you feel that twinge into Sansi's too get the fuck away from me. You know, like, my, my brother used to say that because he's a black belt and a hemp belt. Hemp belt right? and he would always say if anybody, and my cousin was also, and he was in the army, and their motto was if anybody comes in my personal box, I kill him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, no. They, 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 they die. And that's all you guys need to, that's all y'all need to worry about right. is whatever you feel comfortable and you set those, that, those ground rules with yourself. You don't have to broadcast it like, Nick, you're too close to me. Stay away. But you can. You know what? I apologize at a later date. I apologize. But I was just having a weird day. I was feeling uncomfortable. So that the other. I know you now. And I know that I was really not like but angry. Also, nobody likes. <laughs> I mean, just speaking normal. Nobody likes people in the person. Correct me. Yes. But That's some what? people don't understand, don't realize it. There are a lot of people. How many times have you been at the store this and that? And you're like looking at the loaves of bread and this person wants the exact same ones and they're just you're looking at the bread and i'm looking you're hovering like that yeah These are, you're uncomfortable right now like i'm in your, your personal space yeah. those triggers are going to go off in your head when you are outside working <laughs> you are on the clock there are no lee, there's no leeway with the bubble <laughs> there's no leeway with that when you're on the clock if you're at home or you're around friends and family and something happens you know, like you know, but when you're out there and you step foot out of that car and you are now 100 alert and you are on the clock, if somebody makes you feel uncomfortable, off and apologize later. If they get too close, I always say, you know, the kids' country that we're in, leave me alone. I'm leaving. Get away from me. If they don't listen, drop the hammer. I I've literally told people in the supermarket before when they're right behind that, so you need to step back. Yeah. You need to step back. And seven eleven one day, this lady was like, "What's your problem?" I said, "You're cool my heels. I don't feel comfortable. You need to be in arms like the way people are so worried about offending." I was <laughs> yeah, people. People are so worried about offending people in everyday it. society yeah. that that's where it's yeah. like the Beverly Carter story. In this, yeah. she didn't want to tell her, "No, I don't feel comfortable yeah. hanging out with your husband." I'd rather go 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 and be a bitch. I'd rather apologize. Because let's say what was the house? Three hundred, I think it was three hundred ninety-five thousand dollars for the lift price yeah. on the house. What's the commission on that? Four grand, five grand, whatever you guys actually okay. okay. I'm saying actual like, like what's your take home? It money. ain't worth your life unless it's a fifty million dollars. Okay, I might fight for fifty million dollars. You know, <laughs> like that you and you you but no, nothing is worth anything. Somebody comes up to you and asks, give me all your fucking money. You <laughs> have it. No, I'm not gonna fight. I love it. So you can run the other way. We actually, we, <laughs> we got more. I'll trade you. <laughs> That's why I don't carry cash in my wallet. Um, we we, we teach that. So, yeah. what time is it? You're fine. It's okay. only 1 30. So, we talk about this. Yeah. We talk about, uh, come, come, come. so Nick, again, Nick is trying to rob me, but not hurt me, right? So here's the thing about weapons as well. If you see it, you're more than likely safe. -ish. If you don't see it, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So if Nick really wanted to kill me, he's not going to come up and be like, hey. right? Nick's going to be like walking by me and just attack, right? Same thing with a gun. If I pulled a gun out and put it to your head, I'm not going to shoot you. If I pulled a gun out and shot you, that means I'm going to shoot you. <laughs> now, 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 granted. Wow. There are triggers, right? So what we don't want to do is, if, so let's say Nick's a bad guy, city of Baltimore, that a lot of times they have, they, they rob with knives, right? So I'm just standing here, my, let's say I'm at the ATM, right? Standing here, minding my own business, Nick comes up to me and says, hey, give me all your money, right? I'm like doing this, you know, you're trying to rob me, you're going to walk up and, you know, you're, 
seeing fun of me this time. We'll go to the advanced level. Okay. Give me your money. <laughs> Whoa. What is that? Is that real? I have a big <laughs> face. <laughs> no, it's a real knife, right? So he's not he's not just coming and stabbing me and taking my stuff. He's threatening me with a knife right now. But he is threatening me wanting something from me. What do you want? What bro? What what, what do you want? Sixty dollars? Yes. American? <laughs> American. I'm gonna give you my wallet, you can have it. Okay. Okay. And, and I'm gonna give him my wallet you can have it. Right? But here's the thing: big versus little, male versus female. If Nick comes up to me and says, I'm a girl, I don't think you have long, long hair. Lots Why did I be blonde? Lots of hair. I'm offended. Nice <laughs> <laughs> Somebody get this, this pervert out. <laughs> so, and I, and hey, he says, give me your money, right? So normally what I would do is I'm reaching for my wallet. It's right near my back pocket. There's my money. Have it. If he does not care about that, I will know at that point, which means he wants something else, which it's been a dry season for me. Let's go. Let's go. You know, but like <laughs> that may be only extra sixty dollars. Right. At the end of the day, <laughs> I'm scared though. If, yeah. if, if he's not there, if he doesn't care about that, he wants something else. Whether it's he wants me to come with him, he wants to murder me, he wants you know kidnap whatever it may be. At that point, now I know I have to fight or give him what he wants. That's up to you. I always say at that point you're fighting, right? So I'm fighting. He is threatening me with a knife. You're not wearing a grudge against money, sorry. <laughs> so, in this instance, I won't really get to In this instance, <laughs> this is the bad part, right? So, I don't want, if I reacted, if I was to like try to lunge at you, what are you going to do, right? You're going to immediately stab me, right? So, what I need to do is I need to get that out of the way. <laughs> Put it back. Okay. I'm going to have to put a cautionary explicit right? so language I'm here. on this. Yeah, don't do this at home. Kids, I'm a professional. I've been stabbed 47 no, times. No, 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 the money's there. No. He doesn't want it. At this point, I, I know he, he doesn't want the knife. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to hit his hand away and kick him in the groin. And then I'm running away. Right? So we talk about threat. Right? This is a threat. This is somebody that you more than likely are faster than, hopefully. If you're not, then you need to keep kicking them in the groin. But there's a knife. I don't want to fight Nick. I don't want to fight Nick if he has a knife. I'm going to kick him as hard as possible in the groin. And then I'm running for my life. And the reason I'm running for my life is because the knife goes this way. What's the next interaction? Yes, exactly. He's going to bring it back. So I'm here. I kick him and then run away. More than likely, he's going to fall down on the ground. I don't necessarily like this technique because if somebody pulls a knife on you, they can mm -hmm. Right? Within reason, obviously, in case that's a small male versus female, you're not going to be like get in the car, or get down this alleyway, this, that, and the other. I don't care. I'm hitting it out of the way, kicking him in the groin. The same thing can be done from the side. Somebody standing here, I'm hitting him here. I'm going to kick him in the kneecap so he can't follow me. If he's more behind me, double kick. What do you want? Holy shit, is that real? I like, by the way, if you start crying, you talked about this earlier, it immediately lowers their. Yep, you act like you're scared. Oh my God, please leave me. I don't want to oh, be <laughs> Right? So I'm, the goal is to get the knife away, stop them from following you, and run away. Um, we can practice that if you want. I don't necessarily like this. I don't want you guys going out there to be like, oh, a knife. <laughs> Jason showed me this. <laughs> You're going to come in and be like, <laughs> what happened to Tina? Well, she was stabbed 14 times yesterday because she was straight down. She laughed at the knife. And but it. You're in a situation where it doesn't, you have no other option, right? So you hit it out of the way, kick to the groin. Really, it's very, very simple. Got it? So grab a knife. We're just going to practice. By the way, Nick's a big, strong man, right? He does not expect me to go after the knife. So hold it like you normally would, like, and you're looking around, like, you don't want anybody to see you, like, give me the money, give me the money, this, that, and the other. So put it up there like you're going to actually rob me with it. You want to show it to me. Oh my God, please, please. If I hit it hard enough, I'm nine times out of 10, it's going to fly out. Especially if I hit it correctly, it's palm to knuckle or knuckle to knuckle, the hand's going to fly open. Most of the time when I do it, when I did it with uh, at the H car thing, mm -hmm. That night went flying across the room. And, and what's her, the, who's the CEO? Um, oh, Jessica. She started tearing up. I'm so sorry. I did not mean to hit you that hard. Oh, jeez. But she like teared her up. It, it hurts. It hurts. Yeah. If I hold if I hold this knife really, really hard, Nick, just smash the crap out of the back of my hand with your hands. It's fucking painful. Very painful. Now, granted, that held on to it. Real life God. situation. Like, real life situation. Right. Don't hit Santi. Real life situation. I'm Dude. holding it light, right? Yeah, it's it's gone. <laughs> what am I gonna think about at that point? Where's my knife? Oh, I need to get my knife. I don't care about Nick. I need my knife, right? So grab a knife. Let's practice that just a little bit. Don't really smash each other. <laughs> you're, you're up. 
So and this is a this is a this is a low money. threat. <laughs> Basically, you're just coming in saying, "Give me your money." You're not coming in and stabbing. It's a completely you different money. scenario. Right. <laughs> you like money. Give me my disbursement <laughs> check. My money. Give me my disbursement check. Give me all his money. 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 If, if Tina comes up and puts a knife at my stomach, right? My hands are at the knife. If Tina puts a knife at my throat. Okay. Puts a knife at my throat. My hands are at the knife. If she puts it on my forehead. My hands are at the same level as the weapon at all times. The same level as the weapon. Most people are like, oh, no, don't rob me. No, if she puts a knife down here. She's like, give me your money. Whoa. And more than likely, it's a real knife, right? If I have my knife, I pull it out. People pull out a knife. This happens, right? Give me, leave me alone, leave me alone. They're gonna keep coming towards you. That's fine. I have money, it's right here in my pocket. I'm talking, I'm gonna hit it and lean back and kick up and then turn and run. That makes sense? You're leaning away from the attack, so it doesn't get you. Hitting it out of the way, my foot is gonna stop me from falling backwards by catching their groin. But you also have to have the mental- That's why you have to be- Toughness to- Most- if I were here, what if you slap in the guy's like, <laughs> <laughs> no, you just like the, what are you doing? The groin too. That's right. the thing. It's yeah. the, the groin it's, shot. Um, the groin shot is really what it is because <laughs> I can come up to you with anything in my hands that's not a, a gun. Because here's what we don't do: we don't hit a gun, kick and run because there should be like <laughs> and, and you can't out run a bullet. The goal is to get the knife out of the way, clearing a path to drop the hammer. And and, and again, it's a bailout, right? So we can call bailout where I'm just kicking and I'm running away. I have to be faster than this. You have to run. You're screaming and yelling this that. Like I said, we don't necessarily like this, but it's something fun and I have the knives, so let's just practice it. <laughs> right, go. Lady ride with your um, first one on your front seat. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. I actually saw a lady, um, a squeaky boy, MLK, yep. so reached in her window, took her purse. This chick got out and chased him. And <laughs> <the squeaky boy. laughs> Got in the car and drove off. Oh, oh my oh god! Oh shit! She left her key in there. So yeah, she got first in. Car. Oh my god! Yeah. I'd be that idiot. I'd be give me that back. I would have just taken the car. Come on now! Oh shit! Oh, there's my brothers. Yeah, I was. I, was like, I don't care. If I couldn't record this back. <laughs> <That's wild. laughs> so let's just try that. Just from the front. I want you to. I want you, don't. Boys aren't wearing groin protections, don't really kick yeah. each other. Oh, wait, and by the way, it's always <laughs> outside of the hand first. You're hitting ah. the hand It's faster pulling this way than it is pulling this so way. Right I'm hand. just going to make a straight face and then I'm going to laugh really hard. <laughs> they would have hit their hand over outside you. I can't go this way. Outside, oh. outside of their hand. Oh, can you hear me? That oh. And hit as hard as possible. <laughs> and I'm going to be in there. talking to me she said give me your money give me your money what do you want what do you want i have money it's right here in my pocket oh look what her eyes just did yeah. right look. gone uh, any extra time that you can add to this, i have money it's right. i'm gonna reach for it with this hand right here they're gonna watch what you're doing and as soon as you see those eyes go that's the green light to go hit it kick it and run most people are gonna be like give me your money Put, put it in, put it in. Now, no, realistically, money. this never, this has to never happen. Nobody's ever going to come up to you and say, Give me your money. Hit with this one. Give me your money. Right? They're going to come up to you like this. Yeah. Right so when you're right ready. Right give, give me your, give me, give me your money. Again, there's not a lot you can do in those instances except right. grab a knife and just <laughs> drop it. So, again, we teach yeah, this in a women's more. class, but I don't necessarily like it because it's not realistic. Right? What is it? And it also, Keith, come here, in a real life situation, you're the you're the uh you're threatening her. You're threatening her. She's the bad person. All I want you to do is just stand in front of her and say, "Give me your money." That's it. With the knife. With the knife. Yeah, you have the knife. I am Keith's buddy. More than likely, what's going to happen? Keith is going to come up and be like, "Pull the knife on her." She be focused on her, and I'm coming here and I'm getting in her pockets. I'm getting her. 
I'm, this, this happens in the city all the time. Oh, it's wow. never just one person. There's three or four. They come around, they're yeah. giving you their stuff. I don't care because if he's the bad guy and she, she can go in my pockets all day long, the only thing I'm looking at is just really bad. So I'm just like, yeah. cool. You know? <laughs> I'm, that's the only thing I care about. Sorry, I'm going to give him, let him, ah, let him rob, let him rob or take the stuff. Just stab myself because yeah. I have no idea what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. You know what? This is not even working. Yeah. I, I got this. So anytime that there's a knight present, the goal is to create space and get away because the knight can't hurt me from where Nick's standing unless he's really good at throwing it. Oh, is it here? Oh, I was nervous about that. No, it's here. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah, I paid for lunch for y'all. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, what time is it? 20 minutes to 1. Yes, that would be 140. Okay, so <laughs> we let's go over another semi realistic tactic. Uh, yes. So get up, uh, put the knife over there, please. Um, in a real life situation, we have and we're not talking about uh, realtors or, or realtor specific type scenarios. We're talking about passionate male versus female type situations, right? So a lot of the attacks that women deal with are significant others, right? And it's usually a passionate instance of some something happened. Something happened. It's a crazy person on another person. You know, we have crazy stuff. So Nick, thank you for volunteering. So <laughs> <laughs> Nick, Nick is is a female, right? We're just going to use you as a female for right now. Pretty, what's your pronoun, so, Nick? Yeah, what do you identify as? Male. Well, I was born a female. <laughs> if I want to kill Nick, I'm going to choke the life out of him. This happens a lot in the real world, right? Real world, I like choke. Nick is squeezing the life out of me. By the way, for those of you who don't know a choke, if Nick really applied squeeze, squeeze from front and back, so start squeezing as I'm talking, you can hear my note, this, this, that, and the other. He's cutting off the air, and as he's squeezing, he's also cutting the blood okay. off. So it's about five or six seconds here on time. Are you going to choke us to let us see what it's like? I mean, I can. If my you want. last class, they did. They took all of them. And it's all your neck pops. It's all your neck pops. You can. It's good to feel because you feel the panic. That's why it's good. Oh, that's Jason's dog. No, I really don't want to be choking. I look at you at my course because it's a dog. What the hell? Bring it here. Bring it here. They're going to die when they come off. Right? So, so Santi puts his hands on my throat. No, I want you. I'm teaching. Are you teaching? He wants to see what it feels like. Yeah, okay. Now do, it. now do it. Yeah, it doesn't work. But here, so here's the thing. Put your hands on my throat, right? So all I have to do at this point is eliminate the threat, right? So we, we teach this. It's just a big pluck here. <laughs> right like that. What about headbutts? But if they're really applying uh, you don't know where you're going. Knock yourself out. <laughs> Keep right. strong, right? Don't squeeze with your hands, but hold everything else yeah, as tight as possible, up. right? So, so put it on, on my throat, but don't actually squeeze, and you're it's strong. It's really, really strong. So if I'm here, you're right. I, I, if I try to pull, he's very strong. But all I'm really trying to do, connect your thumbs, just don't squeeze your fingers. Does that make sense? So everything's tight. All I'm really trying to do is create space, right? Just a little bit of space. So all I have to really do is come all the way up, which pinches his hand, and then pull straight down. Right? I don't care how strong he is. If I'm strong as shit on teeth, just come up and pluck my wrists away from your throat. Yeah, it's just enough. Now kick me in the groin. <laughs> All you're doing is just creating space. So come back. So when we do this, this is the crop of math technique that I'll teach you one after. So he puts his hands on my throat. This is a, I hate you. I'm going to choke the life out of you. I call this the big McDonald's, right? So the big M, we pluck him back, kick to the groin, and I'm done. And then run away. Right. right? Try it. Don't really kick me in the groin. Big M. So it's a very important you reach all the way up. You do a big M. And all you're doing is walking. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I'm like, damn. I'm so bad. I was able to do that. I was able to do that. It didn't really hurt. It didn't really hurt. It's really for training. I, I just. So all we're doing, Charles, all we're doing with this technique is creating just enough space to breathe, right? I'm I'm lucky. I become Superman, right? So big McDonald's Superman. I'm ripping the fingers away from my throat and kicking him in the groin. That's it. Literally just a big pluck and a kick. Then at that point you can punch in the face, this, that, and the other. 
scared because it's just all in my like my neck jump. Ah, how quick are you with the neck jump? Oh yeah, you're quick. Okay. Like my thing is, can you do this, Gerard? Like, oh my God, please! I don't want it. I position my body sideways. Ah, neck jump now. You can't jump. Oh, neck jump. I love it. So, in, in regards to this, the, the choke from the front, right? So, you have choke from the front, choke from the side. Like, you can choke from anywhere. Nobody's, nobody's, do, nobody's doing this. Ugh, nobody's doing this. Keith is, my, Keith is my, my, my husband, and I just caught him cheating on me, right? Ooh. I already got him. He's already somewhat defeated at this point. I'm going to no, fucking kill you. You're, you can't do that technique there. Don't worry. Granted, he can just, go well. just start bing bonging off my groin at that point, but like, it's bing just bong. close here. So, if we have an instance where Keith is in close, he's in close and he's really trying to, like, you're real, it's packed, it's, you're whispering in my ear that you hate me, I can't fucking wait. All I'm doing, instead of doing this, all I'm doing is this. Oh, yeah. I don't care how strong they are. Up against the wall. That's the easiest one. Same thing. So Keith's here up against the wall. He's leaning up. He can choke me. All I'm doing is reaching up to the ceiling and turning. We call this a door. This is a door, it's closed. I have to open the door. Pete's gonna go through the door when I open it, right? So whenever we're talking about straight arm chokes, Krav Maga teaches this. I want everybody in here just to practice, pick a side and just reach for the ceiling and turn your body. By the way, once I do that, right? So Keith is here, he's choking me. I'm gonna reach for the ceiling. <clears throat> There's elbows, hammer strikes, all of that stuff. Anybody ever seen that movie uh, Enough with Jennifer? Yes. Yes. This okay. is the very first really technique good. that guy yeah. teaches yeah. her. It's probably yeah. not the very first technique. He oh, will, yeah. I guarantee you, he will have you up against the wall choking you. All she did is reaches up to the ceiling mm -hmm. and holds on. She's holding on. Yeah. Bing, 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 all the way through, kicks, whatever you want to do. So grab your partners. Let's play around a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I saw a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, partners. Sorry, partners. I want to do straight chokes. Oh, you weren't here, so you're going to get choked unconscious. Elbows and you can be, you can be from now on. Who left? Yeah, here we go. Hi. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so, we are. So, so, real quick, we'll break it down in step, right? We're going to do, do one arm, right? So, break it down in step. Everybody is going to be right-handed, right? And I say right-handed because we always drop the right hand behind. So when the choke is applied, the very first thing we do is I'm gonna pinch my ear with my bicep. Straight up in the air. And now I'm going to drop my right shoulder back and bring my left shoulder forward. And then that will break the hold. You bring that arm straight down. Elbow strikes are there, hammer strikes But that's the left arm. That's why I said right arm back. Wait, right By the way, right arm back. So left arm goes straight up. Well, left arm's up. Left arm straight up to the ceiling. Pinch your ear with your bicep. And then open the door. Drop your right shoulder back. Bring your left shoulder forward. Now drop the hammer straight down. And then start swinging with whatever. And the reason I do with left side, because this hand is back here. That's your strong side, right? So I'm going to choke you. You're going to practice this. So I'm choking you. Good. This is uh, this is just basically we learned what three techniques. 
we have yeah. 50 million scenarios and 50 million different techniques. The basic principles of what we teach is that it's your basic reaction of how your hands are going to go. So if I swing at Keith, his arm is immediately going to do that, whether he knows what he's doing or not. If somebody's choking you, you're immediately going to do that. We just accentuate it to make it a little bit more productive. Make sense? It does help practice. So, yeah, his gym is right up the street in Elmbridge on Route One by um, behind Mutiny Bar and Grill. So oh, they teach so women's self defense, um, so teenage cool. girls. Yeah, we have a women's we have a women's course. We have regular problem with that process. We also have a ground fighting school now. Part ground fighting. Like, I won't say. You want to roll around on the ground? <laughs> I love wrestling. We have a bunch of girls. We have a bunch of women. There's a yeah. niche. Um, no, me and my best friends do that high school all the time. We just wrestle. But yeah, watch all the guys. We do. Uh, <laughs> we have classes every single night, except yeah. for Sunday. We have classes every day but Sunday. Um, and Tina eventually will be back in there at some point. She's she's used to train, then she quit. I went for a few years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you're not having Tina. Tina. <laughs> the biggest thing to remember: hard versus soft. Hit them soft. Hit them where they're soft. Eyes. Oh, we can do balls, balls, balls if you want. Eyes. Right. Poke to the eyes. Punch to the nose. Palm strike the nose. Throat. Eyes. Nose. Throat. Arm groin. Ball. Come here, Nick. We're gonna have to make oh, it. Right? So Nick's a, Nick's a bad guy. Eyes, nose, throat, balls, 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 balls. Stop. Bite, scream. Those are the third. Right. Bite, scream, run. Yeah. So everybody forgets that. Please stomp on them. Stomp. Oh. He said stomp. We're just so, the guy. Stomping. Stomping. I'm not really gonna do it. The stomping. Oh, so you're okay, like a bad guy. You got to hold of me, right? So I can't use my arm this mat. I'm not gonna stomp his foot. Yeah. I'm gonna drag my heel down his entire leg to his. Shit, that's gonna hurt. Very painful. Yeah. 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 Anyway, that's everything that I have to teach you for now. You have to come to the next one. The next one. The next one. Thank you guys. Thank you. 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 Know. From PRMI. If you need our pizza, you have to send us all your deals. That's, That's right. right.